It's the Jeff Mitty Show. Now here's your host, Brian Smoller. And hello and welcome to another edition of the Jeff Mitty Show here at Paracat Sports Grill. We're glad you could join us live here on Facebook Live. And also, as you do, uh, if you came last week or heard the show last mm-hmm. week, we're turning this into a TV show. So that's why we have the new setup here as well. So it's all kind of the same. Coach only has to do one show, and then it's a multimedia place everywhere, podcasts, all that sort of stuff. So let's welcome in the head coach of your Kansas State Wildcats, Jeff Mitty, who is here today. Wildcats fresh off a number 13 ranking in the AP Top 25, number 10 in the newly released, released net rankings that came out today as well. And, uh, of course, none of that matters a whole lot till the end of the season. You want to be in that position in March. I get that. But nice reward, nice uh, sort of national recognition for the hard work that you and your team have done to this point. Well, I think it's a good place to be right now. It, it, um, we, we've had a good, I think, solid start to, um, to the year. Um, we've done some good things. I think uh, offensively, I think we're coming around. You know, the net combines your efficiency there with your defensive efficiency and Nobody can figure it out but a mathematician, but um, it uh, if you win games and you do them in fairly good style, you should come out. I was curious to see where that number would be um, because uh, it takes a, um, a number of games to get the data point to be accurate, so that's why it got released today. I think there's enough data to, to get some decent numbers. Yeah, and uh, it'll fluctuate, and you, you kind of want to look where your opponents are, too. You know, and, but the Big 12 right now has all 14 teams in the top 100 of the net. You have 12 of the 14 in the top 75. K-State's one of the three in the top 15. The conference right now is rated second toughest in America behind only the Pac-12, and a lot of those teams that are up at the top of the Pac-12 are coming to our league next year, Colorado, yeah. Utah, and the rest. Yeah, I think the league's had a real good start. Um, the top has had a real good start, and I say the top, the teams that were picked at the top, you never know who's going to finish there, but the uh, teams that uh, newly coming into the league have uh, done some good things. Uh, um, they've won some big non-conference games. They've won games they should win. Uh, there has been, I think, pretty good balance across the league. All right, so uh, some of the stuff we're going to get into right here from the get-go, let's talk about, we've had a lot of questions already from Twitter uh, for you that we're going to get to here coming up. Uh, talking about freshmen we've got some uh, references to the Iowa game um, the Glenn twins and some other stuff as well all good stuff that we're going to get to here in a little bit you can join us with a question on Facebook you can also join on Twitter with a question at Ryan Smoller and you can also go to at K-State Women's Basketball and reply there to the tweet we had earlier but I wanted to start um, first just talking about the Jackson State game because it was a complete dismantling of that team 79-37 but you talked about it before the game. We talked about it on the television broadcast. That's a pretty good team. I mean, that's a team that's been an NCAA tournament team three years running. They, they've absolutely steamrolled the SWAC. You're, they are built to beat teams like you guys. I mean, running out two six six posts, that's what they're there to do yeah. is be giant killers by the time they're at the end of the season. This team that beat two top uh, power five teams a year ago. How impressive was the win uh, after you go back and look at it? Were, were you uh, overly pleased, surprised with how dominant you were? Or is that, hey, when you're playing your best, that's anybody could be that sort of lamb of the slaughter? Well, I, you know, one of the things I've been pushing our team to do is to play regardless of play every possession, play every don't worry about the score. Don't worry about what the scoreboard says. Don't worry about what other people say, a- any of that stuff, any of the outside noise. Play play the possession. We started that way back in the summer of really beating that drum with the score of, of down 11, up 11, whatever, whatever the number was. Um, you know, I was concerned with the Jackson State game because of people's outside perception is, oh, Jackson State, you know, where are they from? Where, you know, what league do they play in? All those things. And they beat Tech a year ago at Tech. They have, um, you look at them against some other pretty good opponents, they played very well, but they are built for that. Like you said, I mean, they've got size. That was the biggest team we'd faced. Now, we matched up with a pretty good. Obviously, we've got a pretty good center in our own right. Um, so we matched up pretty good with them. But um, I liked our attitude. I liked our aggressiveness. I liked, uh, boy, we contested a lot of really good shots. Um, defensively, I think we uh, we gave up maybe 
20% open shots, which um, isn't bad. We're trying to get that number down, but we altered 13 of their 52 shots and we uh, rushed another 20 of them. So uh, felt like our defense was pretty good. Then offensively, I think we were pretty efficient most of the game. Yeah, the three-point shot going down. It's the second straight game now. Three-pointers starting to fall for this Wildcat team. And uh, we joked on TV after the game that seeing double-figure threes go up is going to put the fear of God in every single other Big 12 team because that's the one number. If you're right now, if you're another team, you're kind of casually looking at K-State, you're like, yeah, okay, Yoki and their dominating teams defensively. But as soon as you start seeing double-figure threes paired with Yoki Lee and the defense, that's when every other, you would think, team in America is like, oh, no, that's not good. Uh, that's, uh, that's a K-State team starting to figure it out, uh, getting outside shots to go. Yeah, if you if we get that kind of balance, um, we can be pretty hard to stop. You know, we haven't been as efficient at times as we need to be. We still have still have way too many droughts offensively. We still, you know, when we talk about knowing the why, we still forget sometimes that uh, Lee's down there, and uh, we still forget uh, our strength in terms of. Um, we don't trust the offense sometimes well enough to get a better look. You know, and last year we were hunting shots, so that's a little bit different mentality to go, hey, we're good enough, our ball movement's good enough, trust it, trust it, trust it. You know, I talked to him the other day about, I asked him a question, what's the best offensive team in the NBA? And they all were like, ah, oh, the Warriors, Warriors, and, and I'm like, okay, so the Warriors average holding the ball 2.4 seconds a player. So it's out of each player's hands every 2.4 seconds. Um, and that includes the player bringing it up. Well, if you watch them, they move it that quick. Well, we're trying to get that kind of similar movement. So when you see the ball stick or you see the ball being over dribbled, uh, that's the stuff that we're, we're not very good at. Still trying to get uh, everything tuned up. We're going to throw some defensive numbers at you coming up a little later in the show of where K-State ranks nationally because it is surprisingly good. Uh, and not only in the Big 12, but across the country. We also have some individual numbers to get to, as well as the Wildcats uh, have had some star players pop out, and also some other players that you may not come to mind right away that have also been big uh, so far here in the early part of the season. We're going to take our first break, and when we come back, questions from Twitter. We also have the uh, scoring defense and field goal percentage defense and three-point defense numbers to pass along. All that when we continue. Stay tuned. We're at the Powercat Sports Grill on the west side of Manhattan celebrating 10 years serving friends, fans, and families in the Little Apple. If you want to get a question in, you have time to do so on Twitter and also on the Facebook live stream. We'll continue on with the Jeff Mitty Show in a moment here on the K-State Sports Network from their field. Hello, Kansas. We're your energy industry. In the past, we've shown you beautiful slow motion images of gorgeous Kansas sunsets, basketball games, and other images that promote our industry. But right now, it's important that you know the facts. Like the fact that during the past 40 years, there has not been a single instance of groundwater pollution from hydraulic fracturing or injection wells in Kansas by our industry. We respect our state and its natural resources. Get the facts at kansasstrong.com. Great weekend we had, homecoming, uh, great crowd, the crowd was phenomenal. It's a great day to be a Wildcat! Kickoff KC, Rally House has the game day gear you're looking for, including Chiefs sideline gear and the latest college styles. Kansas, Missouri, Kansas State, Chiefs and Royals make KC great. Rally House, Rally House, it's your city, it's your house, it's the Rally House. 
gear up in store and online at rileyhouse.com. Here on the Powercats on Powercat Sports Career on the Jeff Mitty Show. Brian Small along with the head coach of the Wildcats, Jeff Mitty. Welcome those listening across the network. Also watching on Facebook Live. If you'd like to submit a question for Coach, you can do it right now via the Facebook live stream. You can also tweet at me at Brian Smoller as well. We've got a lot of questions to get to, which is great. Interest interest is at an all-time high for the Wildcats. Love it. Um, we asked a trivia question about Jalen Glenn, Glenn, and one of the first questions is more of a comment, but it's from uh, Christian Gabriel at Gabe Gall on Twitter, who tweets and asks, uh, ask coach where I can get a Glenn twin jerseys for my nine-year-old twin girls. Got any, uh, any ideas on that one? I don't. Um, I don't know. Rally House? I don't know. May I don't know. You got to. I don't. I don't know either. I, I, I don't know. Um, That'd be a great question for my sister-in-law Joni Smoller, who works in the fan experience department. So you can email her and tell her that I said that you were to email her, and because uh, she loves it. Yeah. When I throw her oh, stuff yeah, out sure, there. Oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. And uh, Jay Smoller, KStateSports.com, and uh, email her and ask her this question. She'll probably be able to point you in the right direction. Um, all right. So from that, we go to. If you could describe, this is from at MCCO Allen, Allen McComas, who asks, if you would describe this team in three words, what would they be? I'm guessing that this would depend on the day <laughs> that we ask this question. But today, how would you describe this team in three words? Well, if you're asking um, personality-wise, um, pretty consistent would be a word I'd use. Um, pretty uh it's a fun group um pretty smart group uh if you're asking from a basketball standpoint i think they've been tough-minded defensively which i've been pleased with um they've been uh i think more competitive than we saw in june and july i think they've been building that as a group a collective toughness so yeah it's uh, I've said this uh, numerous times to to people, and obviously this is a first radio show uh, for me, um, but I would tell everybody that uh, this is not a surprise to me. I saw this in June. I saw the work ethic. I saw it in July. I saw it in August. saw it in September. There really hasn't been a drop-off in our work ethic. Uh, I've been really pleased with that, and I think uh, that's got to be a continuing part of our DNA going forward. You know, if... uh, you know, winning can do a lot of things to you. Winning can uh, make you feel like you've arrived and you stop doing the things. You know, we all have those things in our own life. You know, I always do that as I have a goal of uh, getting in great shape. And about the time I get close to that, I'm like, that's good enough. And uh, <laughs> if teams do that, that's a problem. That's right. So the winning either drives you to do more and want more and you're hungrier or it um, makes you satisfied and uh, we got to be careful not to be satisfied and uh, certainly we're early in the year I mean we're we're not even 30 percent of the way through the season so we've got a long ways to go that was way more than three words but I I did write down I have a tendency to do that that's okay you and I both fun group consistency and then on the on the floor tough-minded competitive work ethic you've mentioned the work ethic a lot of times and 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 Young ladies always in the gym, shooting the ball on their own. They seem to enjoy being around each other, which is a part of the, the cohesiveness that they have. But it also seems like the culture of, of being, I'm going to go get up my shots. Uh, I know that you're at times in the past, you may have implored a team or, or someone on the team, hey, you got to go get your shots up, get your shot. Doesn't seem like that's been an issue ever. I know this is our first time talking. Your assistant coaches mentioned that when they were here last week. Really hasn't. Um... I think for the first time, we've got an entire roster that goes in and gets shots. Um, that's rare. It's rare. You uh, generally have your gym rats that uh, are in there, and, and you don't have to worry about them. And then you generally, as a coach, maybe put some things in. Hey, I want everybody to get X amount of free throws in this week or X amount of threes this week. I've done none of that since June. And intentionally I kind of wanted to see it and it was just kind of um, you've heard me say this before you got to catch him doing right things so you got to catch him on a Sunday night in June you hear the music in there and you go in there and there's two or three players in there shooting and then maybe you catch him on a Tuesday night and it's two or three different players and this has kind of been what this team has done so um, 
Yeah, it's good. Uh, good. Uh, uh, it, it. I'll give you an example. We got the shot tracker, and Jamia Harris led us in shooting numbers last week. Jamia hasn't led us in shooting before, but this is a player not getting a lot of time right now who's still pushing and doing the right thing, and she's got a chance to get time down the road, and she led us in. She, I just got those numbers like two hours ago or something. So we've had a lot of the players. It's been different players all the time. Zai Walker has led us in shooting. Taryn Sides has led us in shooting. Um, uh, Serena Sundell. Uh, Briley Glenn is one that's always in the gym. So we've got a long list of players that get in there. Um, speaking of the freshmen, uh, I need to come clean here. During the television broadcast, I inadvertently called Zayana Walker a sophomore. She is indeed a redshirt freshman because I didn't think it was a thing until I got a couple people tweeting at me, which whatever. And then today, um, be, uh, thankfully, our, our grandpa and grandma, uh, the Odgers, came up and, and, and wanted me to ask you, are Walker and Lester really freshmen or not? Because, because clearly I've muddled the waters. Uh, no, they are indeed redshirt freshmen. They are. And uh, part of yeah. the, this entire young class and young core. So there yeah, you go. They are. They are. Yeah, they, they, they would be considered redshirt freshmen. Yeah, both of them uh, medically redshirted last year. That's right. Uh, Zai just five games and then the injury and then Lester never saw the floor right. uh, for Louisville. So both along with sides. Also one of our questions today about the freshmen. We're going to ask that question when we return after this word from your local station. Stay tuned. More of the Jeff Mitty Show coming up on the K-State Sports Network from their field. Here in Kansas, we're blessed with an abundance of oil and natural gas energy as well as many other natural resources. Some folks say that producing oil and natural gas harms our farms and ranches. The truth is, oil and gas leasing and production are vital to sustaining Kansas farms and ranches from one generation to the next. We work together, and over the past 40 years, there has not been a single instance of groundwater pollution from hydraulic fracturing or injection wells in Kansas by our industry. Get the facts at kansasstrong.com. Great weekend we had, homecoming, uh, great crowd, the crowd was phenomenal. It's a great day to be a Wildcat! For kickoff, KC, Rally House has the game day gear you're looking for, including Chiefs sideline gear and the latest college styles. Kansas, Missouri, Kansas State, Chiefs and Royals make KC great. Rally House, Rally House, it's your city, it's your house, it's the Rally House. Gear up in store and online at rallyhouse.com. Back again on the Jeff Mitty Show. From Powercat Sports Grill, celebrating 10 years, serving friends, fans, and families in Manhattan. Brian Smoller with the head coach of the Wildcats, Jeff Biddy. Asking questions from Twitter, you can get them in if you want, at Brian Smoller or at K-State Women's Basketball. Replying to our tweet today that's asking for questions. We've also got the Facebook stream up. You can jump on there and uh, ask some questions as well. Uh, this is a good one. This comes from uh, at SNFLWR66. Uh, Mary Miller Callie, I'm guessing. Collie? Collie? In the non conference games we have left, who does Coach Mitty see as the biggest challenge? Yeah, I think uh, certainly Mizzou will be a big one in St. Joe. Neutral floor, so that's a, a unique opportunity there. Um, uh, I think Oral Roberts is putting up a lot of big numbers, so. Uh, they and they played a very tough schedule. They've got a lot of uh, Oklahoma State transfers because Bill Annan's one of the assistants there. So, I would highlight those two in terms of our opponents. I, I think one of the uh, the thing that um, 
You know, you, you just talk about coaches, take the opponents out of the deal. I think the, the biggest challenge is, is still you come off of all the excitement. That's why I was so pleased with the Jackson State game. Where have you raised your standard to because – if you're just going to play the exciting parts of the season, and we played a lot of them, we, we yeah. beat Iowa, come home and play Wisconsin on a Sunday in front of five or 6,000 people, really good crowd. Then go to Florida, which is pretty nice, and then we get to watch everybody back here in eight inches of snow, which was really nice. <laughs> um, and, but we're playing a good Western Kentucky team. We're ranked. Turn around, play North Carolina, ranked. Rematch with Iowa. Um, and so you had a lot of excitement, right? And then we come home, Jackson State, and that's why I was worried about that one, and I really liked the way we played. So now the grind of the season gets here. You'll have plenty of exciting ones, but do you come in and practice and work every day? Do you do all those things? Uh, we practice Saturday night uh, because of uh, some – NIL opportunities for our players trying to sell furniture, I think, in uh, <laughs> <laughs> Furniture Mall of Kansas, I think, uh, uh, deal. Um, Hashtag sponsor. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, so, yeah, good opportunity for them. But we had to practice on Saturday, so we practiced at 5 o'clock Saturday night. And um, that's not always easy to do, but they came in with a great attitude, knocked out a, a short practice, pretty solid. Uh, their work continues to be solid. I do think it's part of uh, – they, they like being in the gym. They like their teammates. Staff's done a great job of just um, not just uh, pushing them to be better, but but giving an environment that they want to be in the gym. They want to they want to get the extra work in. All those things have been really good. It was great hearing from the staff, by the way, as well last week. Uh, I know that it was uh, kind of impromptu, but it was uh, it was great being able to hear from them their take on what we've seen so far this season and their input on the team. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions we asked them all of them at different times were about some of these new faces that are on this team the freshmen with Lester Walker both redshirt freshmen that we talked about before Terrence Sides and then a lot of new players like Gisela Sanchez who's didn't play because of injury and, and redshirted we had to ask uh, Stacy Gregorio about her we got a question here from Sam Nelson who goes by at yo yoga run yoga runs yogi runs can't even read uh, who says, does he see an expanding role, talking about you, Coach Manny, do you see an expanding role for the freshmen, more minutes, or are the minutes played on balance? Looks like some fine young players, but no complaints about the bets so far. Yeah, I don't... I I think that it's going to be game to game. I mean, I think they're all very capable. I mean, Terrence Sides is very capable. Zy Walker is very capable. We need to find more consistency at the backup center spot. Lester was uh, sick the one game. I really wanted her because I felt like we were going to win that game by a number and we could have got her in rotation. And she just, yeah, she was really, really sick and she couldn't go. And, and so I hated that because, you know, when you have opportunities to get a minute, you want to get a minute. So, um, I, you know, I don't know. You know, we've got a deep team. So it's just one of those things that, um, yeah, the better you play, the more minutes you get. And um, if you don't play well on a certain night, don't dwell on it. Just get back in the gym and get better because you're going to get opportunities and um, we're going to play a, a deep rotation. But um, I think this, one of the things that has made us a good team is that our team has to concern themselves with starting minutes, coming in, however. They've just gotten on the floor and competed. And at the end of the day, if they don't, then they won't play because somebody else is ready to play. So it, um, everybody's got a choice in that, and uh, our group's had the right attitude about it. And certainly our freshmen, they're still learning every day. So a player like a Taryn Sides who has had huge moments this year, she's also had rough moments. And uh, it was good to see her shoot the ball well at home the other night. Good to see her do that. But... Um, you know, she's she's already had some big moments in her career uh, eight games into this. So uh, there's going to be a lot of big moments for her as I walk her. Lester's one. we got to find more minutes here, although Lester has to find more minutes. She's got to force her to play me or play her more. She's got to force me to play her more. And uh, some of that's going to come at the defensive end because that's an area she's got to improve. Let, so one of the things you and I talked about early this season before the season started, and I know that you it's 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 a coach's best nightmare but also uh, it's a thing to work through you mentioned how deep you are so how do you balance rotations uh, we saw a little bit in the jackson state game where you had 
a lot of those freshmen on the floor at the, at the same time. And you could tell there was a level of familiarity with each other because they may be on, uh, you know, the team opposite the starting five at times yeah. in practice. You could see the ball whipping around with the young players because, like, they knew each other. So do you group it like that? Like, you're going to put certain players on the floor with each other, or are they all interchangeable one through 13? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think one of the things in practice I've tried to do is, is move our rotations around each week so that everybody's playing with different groups. And, and that can be not – boy, there's a lot of ways that people say, no, I just keep my top seven with the top seven, and they get really, really good. And, boy, there's some validity in that. There really is. Um, but we've got such great competition that – and I may only move one or two players a week just to mix it up a little bit. But then we – I'll give you an example. Most practices will scrimmage those two teams against each other, let's say four times in short segments. And then we'll scrimmage our guys maybe another four times. So team A will scrimmage the guys twice. Team B will scrimmage the guys twice. And we'll scrimmage each other four times. Now, they might only be two-minute segments or what we call four trips, but they're getting those segments together. Um, the other thing they do is they do their their um, breakdown drills together. So if, if the offensive group is together, they're together, and then the and then we're working um, defense at one end, offense at one end, and those groups are doing that together. Because everybody always thinks of working together as an offensive thing, but at the defensive end, we have different things that we do with um, – Eliza Moppin playing center than we do with Yoki. So it's important that you get used to who you're out on the floor with. So um, all those things are critical. I don't know. This is just how we're doing it. Um, with this particular team, I think it's kept us uh, fresh. I think it's kept us motivated. And, and certainly one of the reasons is we've just got a lot of competition. So um, we, we need to keep that competition. In your career, have you ever coached a team this deep before that's had this, this much competition? Yeah, I, I have actually, and um, it was a, it was a challenge. It was a challenge. Um, that team ended up very well, but it was more of a challenge early in the year for that particular team. Now that team had a few other issues. That team had point guard issues early in the year because we had graduated two point guards the year before, and we had new point guards. So it's not an exact comparison, but it was a team that could go 11, 12 deep, and was really, really talented. Had an All American center. But we struggled in the early part, partly because of the point guard situation and then partly just because of the cohesiveness. Um, and that team did not get in the gym like this team. So we can talk about all the cohesiveness, but this team's getting in the gym in hours that we're not, we're not even seeing. So there's a, there's a lot to be said for that. Yeah, it certainly has paid off. I mean, even if you're thinking about, well, every team's got rust at the beginning of the year as they try and sort through everything. You see it on the guy's side right now, K-State, you know, trying to put some new pieces in different places and figure out, okay, what's our role is going to be. This K-State women, because of who they've beaten, how well you've played, that's what gets you really excited about where they'll end up being here in a couple of months. We've still got some numbers to pass along about this great defense. We've got a few more questions as well well lined up. Stay tuned. More of the Jeff Benny Show when we return on the K-State Sports Network from Learfield. In Kansas, the oil and gas business is often a family business that can span generations. We're a four-generation Kansas oil family. Oil and gas revenue supports our ranching and farming operations through good years and bad. We work together as good stewards of the land. You might be surprised to know there hasn't been one drop of groundwater pollution from hydraulic fracturing in Kansas over the past 40 years. Get the facts about Kansas oil and natural gas. Oil, oil and, and natural, natural gas, gas keeps, keeps this Kansas, Kansas family, family strong. strong. 10 to the 5 to the goal line. Touchdown. Touchdown. Kansas is tied for the reason. Sheldon is ruined by Carter. Gregory steps back to three. Takes the shot from distance and scores. It is tank. It is gone. It's a great, great weekend we had. Homecoming. Uh, great crowd. The crowd was phenomenal. It's a great day to be a Wildcat.
Get ready for kickoff, KC. Rally House has the game day gear you're looking for, including Chiefs sideline gear and the latest college styles. Kansas, Missouri, Kansas State. Chiefs and Royals make KC great. Rally House, Rally House. It's your city, it's your house. It's the Rally House. Gear up in store and online at rallyhouse.com. I don't remember. Back on the Jeff Benning Show here at Powercat Sports Grill, celebrating 10 years, serving friends, fans, and families in Manhattan. Brian Smuller, head coach of the Wildcats, Jeff Mitty. We're glad you could join us. By the way, Kansas Strong, a proud sponsor of K-State women's basketball. Strike through reliable oil and natural gas. Get the facts at kansasstrong.com. All right, back to the questions from Twitter. This question comes from our good friend at Joe Bagley 90, who asked the questions. And this was actually a question that was asked last week, but you weren't here to answer it. Okay. So okay. we've carried it over. Thanks to uh, our good friend, Joe, who asks, and Lawrence, you'll appreciate this one. What did the refs tell coach Mitty in Iowa city at the end of the third quarter when the shot clock violation occurred and we did not get the last shot with six seconds. They said, you're in Iowa City, just shut up and take it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, they, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's probably what they wanted to say. Um, now they, yeah, I, I'm not still convinced that, uh, so because the clock should have kept running, they stopwatched it and said that the time would have ran out. Mm. And, of course, my argument, too, is why didn't you check the shot clock violation why didn't you rule shot clock violation so that you could get it right because uh -huh. if you rule shot clock violation then you have to go to the monitor and then you can come out and say no the shot's good and now there's 6.1 seconds over there got it so the answer to the question is there was no shot clock violation ruled therefore can't go back they and look counted at the it they counted it good clock supposed to keep running we need to keep playing through it clock operator stopped it everybody stopped that's yeah so yeah um but i've never been a game where six seven seconds just disappear yeah like that right like like in football where you have the 10 second runoff yeah, right. you know like I've, I've never been in a game where we have like a six seven second runoff because of that and, and it's still but you know, mo most of the time, the officials on a play like that come in and immediately do That's this right. number and go over there and, and double check it. Um, and it was close, but they were wrong. <laughs> I mean, it was close, but it was still in our in our you know it's still in our hands. That's right. So um, uh, ended up costing us a possession, and they had the ball coming out in the fourth, which that obviously was a um, you know it's a it's a uh, play in the game that uh, you certainly wish they had aired on the side of uh, you know shot clock violation right and in the end it's a moot point because you win the game but certainly and, and listen officials are human too I know no one wants to hear that but um, they do make mistakes part of the early season learning from them too hopefully uh, not something that occurs again back at Powercat Sports Grill celebrating 10 years serving friends fans and families in Manhattan how about some of these defensive numbers by the way for K-State the Wildcats come into this week Allowing teams to shoot just 33.2% shooting and just 20.3% from behind the three-point line. Both of those two numbers rank first in the Big 12. The three-point shot allowed of 20.3% is fifth best in the country right now for Kansas State. Unbelievable. And then scoring average, K-State's allowing just 52.5 points. That also ranks the top 20 nationally. Third best of the Big 12. This uh, field goal percentage, 13th in the country. 20th in the nation in defensive rebounding. That was one thing I was going to ask you about as we wrap up these defensive numbers is the defensive rebounding because people are like, well, okay, fine, you're grabbing rebounds. But it's noticeable in that you're not allowing a lot of second chances for opponents. Yeah, and I, I would say this. I, those are fine numbers. Those are not the numbers I'm paying attention to. Um, because I, I'm, I'm not paying attention to the result as much as I'm paying attention to are we boxing out, are we contesting shots, are we leaving our feet when they leave their feet to shoot, 
the things that we are emphasizing in practice. And I don't think our box outs are good enough. I don't think our rebound down from our guards are good enough. So when we go, so we're evaluating everything not on the result. Because let's be honest, you can guard Caitlin Clark great, and she can still hit deep threes. Right. She had to hit two great shots to beat us in Florida. Yep. And that wasn't bad defense. That wasn't us doing the wrong thing. That was just a great player making a better play. Um, the ones that bug me are the ones where we have breakdowns and we don't do the things that we've worked on. So um, some of those stats over the course of the season, those stats will bear out how, how you do the other things. So, you know, right now we're really focused on what we can control and what we can evaluate in practice and are we getting in the shot line? Are we doing the things defensively necessary? Are we in the gaps? The team really loves that goat thing. Yep. Um, so, you know, they, they love that part of it. So they're having fun with that. But it's emphasizing what we want to emphasize defensively. And um, um, so uh, th- those are the things evaluating. Now, the numbers are good. Um, this time of the year, though, it's so skewed, though, because sure. you have so many teams playing different kinds of competition, right? And so it's so skewed to who you're playing. It's like we have played a... I'll be honest, we played a wide range. We played some really good offensive teams, and we've re- played some really poor offensive teams that just don't score a lot of points. And so I don't know where we're at. I think we're pretty solid. I think there's a lot of room to get better. Let me ask you about a couple of individuals here uh, for your squad. Um, we'll do one and then take a break and then come back and ask some others. Since we're talking defense, Jalen Glenn, we had a trivia question about her before, but Again, her uncanny ability to wreak havoc on another person. And she and Zy Walker have become, it seems like, it's not just one. Like before, last year we knew about Jay Glenn and and how good she was defensively and reading passes and getting steals and that sort of stuff. But now you add Walker into the mix, and it seems like you've got more than one person that you can rotate on a Caitlin Clark or whoever else and become that. uh, They can be a stopper for you. You don't have to rely on Jalen Glenn giving you 37 minutes of being in the in the the shorts of somebody i guess yeah there was a big drop off from if jay had to go to the bench and and um, we had to rotate somebody to that player now zai has uh, taken on that uh, role i think others have really improved their defense i think the this is the best i've seen serena play she's really shutting things off but back on jalen glenn I, it's it, she really is a uh, She's where she's supposed to be 95% of the time. And there are times in practice where you go back on practice film and you go, I didn't even notice her today. And yet when I went back on film, she was so good in the gaps, right where she's supposed to be, stunning to help where she needed to. Um, just doing all the little things right. She just does it so effortlessly. Sometimes you don't notice. Now, in a game, you notice because she's on the other team's best matchup, right? Right, right. But um, Zai has added to that. Um, we're certainly uh, better at that end of the floor. I think there's been a lot of improvements of our players. I think Briley Glenn's playing really good defense. I think she has improved her defense. I think she's doing things better. I think Taryn is learning and learning where she can be more effective and learning also where she doesn't want another player to get her. Um, she's kind of learning to win the plays. You know, like we tell her, you know, you got to win the plays out on the perimeter because you're not very big. When they get you into that area of the floor, that can be a problem. She's kind of learning that. So we're, we're getting better there. Um, Yoki's getting better. She's moving better than she was two weeks ago. Um, I think we've still got a long ways to improve. I think Gisela Sanchez has improved defensively because um, that wasn't a word she understood very well <laughs> when we first got Gisela. And I think she used to, I think she would use the language barriers as an excuse. <laughs> yeah, right. And we have finally 
come to one language on that. <laughs> uh, Gisela is a great personality. So much fun uh, to interact with her on the Florida trip and uh, see her around her teammates. And she'll have, uh, obviously, a, a big um, motivation for this game against McNeese State on Wednesday. There are a number of uh, Spanish players on this team on McNeese State that she's either known, I'm sure, through club or seen uh, on the youth national team. So uh, that'll be a big one for her. We'll talk about Gisela. We're going to ask about Gabby. We're going to ask about Serena. All when we come back, stay tuned. More of the Jeff Mini Show when we return on the K-State Sports Network from Learfield. Here in Kansas, we're blessed with an abundance of oil and natural gas energy, as well as many other natural resources. Some folks say that producing oil and natural gas harms our farms and ranches. The truth is oil and gas leasing and production are vital to sustaining Kansas farms and ranches from one generation to the next. We work together and over the past 40 years, there has not been a single instance of groundwater pollution from hydraulic fracturing or injection wells in Kansas by our industry. Get the facts at kansasstrong.com. To the five, to the goal line, touchdown. Touchdown, Kansas State. Great weekend we had, homecoming, uh, great crowd, the crowd was phenomenal. It's a great day to be a Wildcat! Kickoff KC, Rally House has the game day gear you're looking for, including Chiefs sideline gear and the latest college styles. Kansas, Missouri, Kansas State, Chiefs and Royals make KC great. Rally House, Rally House, it's your city, it's your house, it's the Rally House. Gear up in store and online at rallyhouse.com. Back again on the Jeff Minnie Show from Powercat Sports Grill, celebrating 10 years, serving friends, fans, and families in Manhattan. Wildcat basketball also brought to you by the Furniture Mall. Should have read this one earlier. <laughs> sure. Experience the fun of shopping and make your home, oh yeah, at the Furniture Mall. And by Metal Arc Hills, a local not-for-profit retirement community focused on supporting people in living their best lives. All right, we thank you for listening across the network tonight. Also watching on Facebook Live. You can uh, get a question in. Still have time with the, only two segments left or so, but you can get one in if you want as we wrap up the show. Wanted to ask you about a couple of other individual players. I'm first going to ask you about Serena, who had a tremendous tournament down in Florida. We didn't get to talk to you last week about her play, but she continued it against McNeese State, even in the game where she wasn't really asked to go out and drop 20 points, whatever. I had another double-figure game. So in the last four games, she's averaging 16.5 points, five, and a, five assists, six rebounds, and is now 6 of 13 behind the arc the last five games. One of the things she had told Hannah Whetstone, our silo reporter for the game, was that her her mindset, her confidence is at an all-time high. She did mention, she did reference a, a conversation that you and some of the assistants had with her prior to the Florida trip about, hey, it's time to go. It's time to see what we saw last year, all that. I guess take us through Serena Sundell's mindset. Have you noticed this as well? She's not a very outspoken personality and kind of an even keeled emotion but it seems like her confidence is at an all-time high yeah i don't think there's any doubt uh you can just see it uh, i don't think you you can just see her body language is different on the floor you can just see it and you could see it before from a i'll give you an example there was a point in the iowa game on the road at iowa city and there's i don't know 230 to go in the game or maybe a little bit more i can't remember but there's a play where she gets knocked around and she kind of has a smile on her face and a smirk on her face and it's just a really relaxed look for being in a tight game in front of 15,000. And I noticed it when I went back and watched that and I'm like, you know, that's a kid that is in the moment and enjoying the moment and that wasn't back when she was scoring. But that's different for her, you know. Um, 
Now, our conversations have been, look, let's get back to being aggressive because I think she was trying to get everybody involved too much. And, and at times we were having to play four on five and she just wasn't taking good shots. She was literally turning down really, really good looks for her. And I think it was just her just trying to get everybody involved. So there's always that balance. There's always a good point guards want to get all their teammates involved. And when you have a deep roster that you even feel like, oh, I got to get everybody involved. So um, she's playing really good. But I, I could tell in her demeanor uh, under duress at Iowa, um, just looking at her body language that and we were down at the time like four or five points, you know, so we're right in the fight um, and um, it's as good a look as I've seen a, a, of her. And then you go back to the tournament. Um, yeah, just really aggressive. Uh, never felt like she was forcing things, felt like she was playing at the pace that she wanted to play at, you know. Well, let's ask about Gabby Gregory. I know it's been a struggle for Gabby, uh, one that you never have to worry about working hard and always has a great approach at it and mentally she in the last couple of games has hit four three-pointers and how about these numbers the last five games and I know she wants her shot to get back and and Stacy talked about that when she was on here before working with the guards and trying to get her back in rhythm but she's averaging over the last five games eight points a game five assists five rebounds a game so it, she's doing a lot of other things even though the shot's not falling for her at this point in time what's your take on her play well, she'll have the most assists in her career if she keeps this up. She's really passing the ball well. I'd like for her to dribble less. I think she, her answer to uh, uh, um, pressure or answer to frustration is to go just bully drive it sometimes. And I'd like for her to let the offense come to her a little bit more. But I love the mentality. And, and uh, look. She's always going to be uh, – she, she has uh, no fear – she plays that way, and so uh, we're not going to take that away from her. You know, the one thing about her shot is um, she's been battling, and I haven't talked about this, and I don't like to talk about it, but I will tonight because people go, what's wrong with her shot? Well, she's been battling a wrist injury for a while, and she hasn't said a word about it, doesn't ever ask to come out. She got an injection before one of the tournaments, so it's not a uh, – and I think where it's bothering her the most is just getting used to how it feels day to day. So on this day, it feels good. On this day, it doesn't feel as strong. And I think we're getting closer to it feeling really good. But, you know, she's tape on it half the time. And so that's not easy to do as a shooter. And she never uses anything as an uh, excuse or, or anything like that. But um, there's no doubt that uh, that has uh, impacted it a little bit from a consistency. Yeah, no doubt. And, and even being less than 100%, I point out the other numbers to show, she hasn't let it affect the other parts of her game. She's so valuable in the other pieces. That's why she's out there. So, uh, I, I think she has really um, improved every other area of her game. And, um, and uh, yeah, have no, have no doubts that uh, she's going to have some big, uh, big moments here. And uh, she's improved every other area of her game. Absolutely love Gabby and being around her. She was the leader of that Gap Goat stuff, uh, along with Yoki and Serena, uh, as they came together and come, came up with that. But uh, it's been fun to have Gabby here the last two years. Wish she had been here all four, uh, and maybe more. But uh, phen phenomenal player and attitude and parents and family and all that stuff. We'll take a break, come back. We're going to ask about Gisela Sanchez and the week ahead for K-State when we return on the K-State Sports Network from their field. Here in Kansas, we're blessed with an abundance of oil and natural gas energy, as well as many other natural resources. Some folks say that producing oil and natural gas harms our farms and ranches. The truth is, oil and gas leasing and production are vital to sustaining Kansas farms and ranches from one generation to the next. We work together, and over the past 40 years, there has not been a single instance of groundwater pollution from hydraulic fracturing or injection wells in Kansas by our industry. Get the facts at kansasstrong.com. 10 to the 5 to the goal line. Touchdown. Touchdown. Kansas is for this reason. Great weekend we had, homecoming, uh, great crowd, the crowd was phenomenal. It's a great day to be a Wildcat!
us. Shop every team in town. College and pro. Get ready for kickoff, KC. Rally House has the game day gear you're looking for, including Chiefs sideline gear and the latest college styles. Kansas, Missouri, Kansas State. Chiefs and Royals make KC great. Rally House, Rally House. It's your city, it's your house. It's the Rally House. Gear up in store and online at rallyhouse.com. Back again on the Jeff Mini Show here at Powercat Sports Grill, where... They celebrate 10 years serving friends, fans, and families in Manhattan. The Wildcats have McNeese State coming up this week. We'll talk about the Cowgirls in a moment. We teased Gisela Sanchez here. She's going to be going against a team that has a lot of uh, international flavor to it in McNeese State. Uh, many players from Spain, so she'll have a little bit of tie to that team. I'm sure she'll know some of those players from AAU or their club ball. And there were a couple that played on the national team with her. Uh, in the national team uh, under 16 team but just sell the last three games averaging 9.7 rebounds a game and then she added a f career high four assists against Jackson State and you mentioned her defense already but give us a take on where do you think Gisela is at as she's coming back off an injury uh, and having not played basketball for a pretty significant amount of time yeah I think she, I think she's doing well um, I, I she's fun to watch um, she uh, really knows how to play she really has got a little flair to her she um, loves that mid-range jumper she um, has really expanded kind of that probe dribble turnaround jumper which has kind of become uh, her, one of her go-to moves we do a drill in practice where we play one-on-one -on -one. And that is a move that she goes to pretty consistently that she can get off against almost anybody. And she's really developed a lot of confidence there. I think as we see some teams play a zone, she's going to be a player that we're going to like in the middle of that zone. She really likes that middle of the floor area, and she plays very well there. Um, gotten off to a little slow start from three. Footwork was kind of an issue, and uh, we, we've done a – Stacey Gregorio's done a great job of correcting some of that. Um, She's another one that um, I have loved the look at from her late in games. You, you talk about the uh, Iowa championship game in Florida. She makes the huge and one drive to take the lead. Uh, she's out there playing fearless. Um, I, I like the look. I think she's a player that we can uh, – maybe go to in stretches uh, as we develop her throughout the year. One of the highest arcing shots I've ever seen uh, that we've had in a, in yeah. a long time. Let's get back to Kimberly Dietz. You guys remember Dietz used to have those really high arcing shots. Uh, that's kind of how Gisela shoots the ball. Yeah, and that's probably that's something I'd like to get a little bit out of because I don't think that's where that shot was a while back. I think she's pushing a little bit more than she was uh, previously. So we're actually kind of taking a look at that with um, – our arc shooting that will measure that because um, I, I do think it's a little too high but um, you know if you hit nothing but net it doesn't matter how That's high right. you shoot it you know hey if it's going in uh, yeah, why, yeah yeah don't mess with it yeah don't but, mess with it. but I think the three can be more consistent you know she led the uh, FIBA under 20 and three point shooting she's gotten off to a slow start there and that's kind of where I think maybe she's uh, pushing the ball a little more than she needs to we'll take one last break wrap it up on the K on the K-State Sports Network from their field here in Kansas, we're blessed with an abundance of oil and natural gas energy, as well as many other natural resources. Some folks say that producing oil and natural gas harms our farms and ranches. The truth is, oil and gas leasing and production are vital to sustaining Kansas farms and ranches from one generation to the next. We work together, and over the past 40 years, there has not been a single instance of groundwater pollution from hydraulic fracturing or injection wells in Kansas by our industry. Get the facts at kansasstrong.com. Great weekend we had, homecoming, uh, great crowd, the crowd was phenomenal. It's a great day to be a Wildcat!
Get ready for kickoff, KC. Rally House has the game day gear you're looking for, including Chiefs sideline gear and the latest college styles. Kansas, Missouri, Kansas State. Chiefs and Royals make KC great. Rally House, Rally House. It's your city, it's your house. It's the Rally House. Gear up in store and online at rallyhouse.com. All right, wrap it up. The Jeff Biddy Show here from Powercat Sports Grill, celebrating 10 years serving friends, fans, and families in Manhattan. Brian Smolder, along with the head coach of the Wildcats, Jeff Mitty. Penn State, West Virginia playing tonight in a, in a matchup between number 25 Penn State at West Virginia as we check the Big 12 scoreboard. How about this score? Four minutes to go in the fourth quarter. West Virginia 79, Penn State 62. Yeah. In Morgantown. That's a big that's a big time victory if West Virginia pulls that off. Penn State had been on fire to begin the year. They're only lost by two points to USC, who's in the top five. And Penn State's it's a trap game for them because they go to Ohio State uh, coming up this week. Yeah. But the Mountaineers, Mark Kellogg's team playing pretty well. I think the whole league's had some good wins. I really do. I think it's going to be a uh, fascinating year. You look at um, you look at West Virginia in that one. They're undefeated. You look at uh, what TCU's done. Um, now they may have just won the Southland, but they've done. They, <laughs> That's right. they, now they've actually played better than that. But Mark's done a great job with them early, and they've got Sedona and and J I think Texas Tech's undefeated. Yep. They've actually had a little softer schedule, but. They beat a Santa Clara team that wiped out Oregon. So, I mean, there are some good wins in this league right now. McNeese stayed up next for the Wildcats, 630 on Wednesday. Coach, thanks for joining us. We'll see you then. All right, Brian. Thank you. Jeff Benny joining us here on the Jeff Benny Show. Stay tuned. We'll be back on the air on Wednesday night for the Wildcats here on the K-State Sports Network. Here in Kansas, we're blessed with an abundance of oil and natural gas energy, as well as many other natural resources. Some folks say that producing oil and natural gas harms our farms and ranches. The truth is, oil and gas leasing and production are vital to sustaining Kansas farms and ranches from one generation to the next. We work together, and over the past 40 years, there has not been a single instance of groundwater pollution from hydraulic fracturing or injection wells in Kansas by our industry. Get the facts at kansasstrong.com.